my everyday makeup routine lately has been perfection. Is the end result probably going to look like every other everyday makeup routine that I've ever shared? Yes. But regardless, it's always fun to share the combination of products that I'm playing with at the moment. So even though this might look very similar to everything else I've ever done, know that it is still special. <laughs> We're just going to jump right into it. You may notice that I have these under eye patches on. This is not really part of my everyday makeup routine. I was actually going through my makeup collection and I found these just sitting in there and I was like, you know what? I'm just going to pop these on. They're from Rodeo and they're called the Dragon's Blood Jelly Eye Patches and it's basically a hydrating eye patch with hyaluronic acid. It also says that there's dragon's blood in here, which is confusing. I need to look into what exactly they mean when they say dragon's blood, but apparently it's supposed to support in restoring skin hydration and elasticity. It does also feel really nice. It has a bit of like a cooling sensation to it, which I really enjoy. I feel like I want to do these under eye patches more often. Let me know in the comments what your favorites are um, because I'm very new to this under eye patch game, but that, that feels good. My under eyes look the same, but it feels nice. <laughs> I'm gonna start everything off with just a little bit of moisturizer. This is my Grown Alchemist Hydro Repair Day Cream. It's one of my favorites to apply, especially underneath makeup because it's just super lightweight and I don't find it interferes with anything. And a quick little skin update. I finally feel like I'm at a place with my skin where things have actually gotten better. Um, if you're not up to date, I was dealing with perioral dermatitis and it's pretty much gone, which <laughs> is thrilling. Um, a lot of you I'm sure are wondering how I was able to get rid of it. It was definitely a combination of a lot of things. One of the biggest things was just keeping my skincare routine very, very, very simple. For a couple months, I was using just a moisturizer and I was using the La Roche-Posay Cicaplast Balm. I wasn't using any actives, nothing. I was just simply cleansing my face and putting on that moisturizer. That was it. Once things were a little bit more under control and it wasn't as reactive, my esthetician actually recommended that I try this laser treatment called Laser Genesis, I believe it was called. And I really feel like this laser treatment is what kind of took my skin over the edge in a good way. Like it went from, okay, this is under control to now, oh, I don't have any more texture or inflammation around my mouth anymore. I did three rounds of the laser so far. I'm actually going for my fourth round tomorrow. And every single time I do it, my skin just looks better and better and better. This particular laser treatment is supposed to be really, really nice for rosacea, redness, inflammation, I guess also perioral dermatitis. And I've since upped my skincare routine a little bit. I started to incorporate a toner, um, which has been also a huge, huge help. I feel like it allows my skin to kind of relax after I wash it because my skin is very, very reactive and sensitive. I've also been incorporating a hyaluronic acid and just like a really nice lightweight moisturizer. So that's my little update on my skincare routine. So with that said, I actually wasn't using an SPF on my skin for a while because I didn't want to add anything else to my skin that could potentially irritate it. But I'm really happy that I'm finally back and reunited with my beloved Elastin Skincare Hydra Tint Pro Mineral Sunscreen. This is one of my absolute favorite sunscreens, not just because it's a great mineral sunscreen, but also because it is one of the most beautiful everyday skin tints. This has some pretty solid coverage to it, especially for just a tinted SPF. I'm just always so impressed with how great this looks on my skin. It always makes my skin look so hydrated and perfected, and it gives such a good glow. I just love that my favorite skin tint is an SPF, and it just keeps me consistent and using it every single day. So I'm I'm gonna use two pumps and I'm just going to first spread it evenly over my face and I just apply this with my fingers. It blends beautifully into the skin. And it feels kind of like you're blending in a moisturizer. You can also totally use this just as your base and then you could put your foundation on top. I don't really feel like that's necessary for me. I find this gives me the perfect amount of coverage, especially when I pair it with concealer. And so it keeps everything also really lightweight because I'm not layering on a ton of base products. For my concealer, Tower 28 Serum Concealer, this is still my favorite everyday concealer. I'm using the shade DTLA. I'm just applying a couple dots underneath my eyes. And because the skin tint gives coverage, but not a ton of coverage, I am also gonna put a couple dots around the face just to up the coverage just a bit on the areas that I want a little bit more from. Then I'm just gonna take my sponge and blend that out. I feel like I have not touched another concealer since discovering the Tower 28 Serum. It is just so good. It meshes so beautifully with every single base product that I pair it with. Because it's so hydrating, it also just looks so 
dewy and stunning underneath the eyes. It gives such a nice fresh appearance. I wish I could tell you that I've been using a different bronzer, but I just simply have not. I finally have a fresh pan of the Skin Enhancer. I hit pan and pretty much completely finished another one of these. I mean, do I even need to like talk about this with you guys? I feel like you know the drill, you know how much I love it. It, it still is my favorite, favorite, favorite everyday bronzer because it just looks so natural. This bronzer makes it look like I actually saw the sun over the last couple of months, but I can assure you I have not. And it will continue to be my favorite and a part of my everyday makeup routine for the foreseeable future. So even though the Makeup by Mario bronzer gives a really nice veil of bronze and I look like nice and warm now, I still want a little bit of sculpting. And I don't find that this gives a lot of shape to the face. I need something a little bit more cool toned and a little bit more precise as well. So I love the Rare Beauty uh, bronzer stick for that. This is the shade Bright Side and it's nice and cool toned. And I just put a little dash on my cheekbone. I'm also gonna put some on my nose as well. And I also have been enjoying putting a little bit of this right on the corner of my eye, just kind of bringing it towards my temple. Once I blend it out, it's gonna give a very natural lift to my eye without actually having to go in with eyeshadow because for every day, I don't wear eyeshadow. So instead of getting that lift with eyeshadow, I'm just getting it with my bronzer. I'm gonna blend that with my sponge. You see how it adds just a little bit of extra oomph to that bronzer? But it's still very soft for every day. It's not like I'm heavily sculpting my face or anything like that. There have been days. <laughs> and I'm not proud of this, where I have walked out of my house and gone throughout my day with my nose contour not blended or under my lip or on my jawline. And the fact that nobody told me is wild. I mean, I guess that would be extra embarrassing if somebody did tell me. I would almost rather they didn't say anything, but oh my God, I was just walking around all day with just stripes on my face and people were like, oh, she tried something today. Maybe, maybe she should never do that again. <laughs> See how nice that looks when you just put that little bit of bronzer on the outer corner of the eye? It just adds such good shape. Love. Okay, before moving on, I'm just going to set my under eyes very lightly with my M Cosmetics powder. This is the Portrait Mode Refining Setting Powder. This is one of my new favorite powders. Um, I have been using this over the Kosas Cloud set which is wild. You guys know how loyal I've been to the Kosas Cloud set now for years, and it takes, it would take something pretty amazing for me to um, wanna use something different, but this powder is stunning. It's, it's very similar to the Kosas Cloud set in a way. I feel like it's more blurring though, and I just feel like it really airbrushes the skin so nicely while still avoiding any powderiness. The key also to keeping powder lightweight is a teeny tiny little brush because with a teeny tiny fluffy brush, you'll actually be able to control the powder so that it doesn't go everywhere. And so you're not putting in places where maybe you don't necessarily need it. So that just keeps everything super lightweight, which is always my goal. For blush, oh my God, I'm obsessed with this combination lately. It's these two guys. First, I'm going to use the MAC Glow Play Blush in Blush Please. This is a gorgeous, medium toned, for my skin tone, neutral blush. So in the pan, this probably doesn't look very exciting. What I love so much about this color is that it almost is a little bit on like the bronzier side. It's like a bronzy pink. And the way that this translates on the cheeks, it just gives warmth to the cheeks. It doesn't really look like I'm wearing pink blush or red blush or berry blush. It just looks warm. And the Glow Play blushes, it's so hard to say that for some reason, the Glow Play blushes are very, very, very beautiful. They have a very, very subtle and natural glow to them. You can kind of see it in the pen, how it just has this really nice shift. There's no shimmer though, or a shine that's like too obvious. So you're gonna be left with just a very creamy looking cheek. But I should have mentioned, this actually is not a cream. It's kind of a hybrid between a cream and a powder. It's more of a putty formula. And with this type of formula, I find at least it lasts a lot longer than a cream, but you're still gonna get that nice, creamy look to the skin. Like, look at how stunning this color is. So obsessed. Like this, this is my new favorite. There was a Glow Play blush that I was obsessed with years ago when they first launched. And I'm trying to remember what the shade was. I just need to look back in my videos and do some investigating, but it would be kind of funny if it was Beach Please. This is stunning on its own. You honestly could totally leave it at this and I often do, but I've also been really enjoying layering it with this blush. Somebody told me in my last video how to pronounce the name of this brand and I need a quick reminder. So I'm just gonna look this up real quick. Kiar. Kiar. 
Kiar Weiss from Kiar Weiss. Okay, we're gonna say that five times and I'm never gonna forget it. Kiar Weiss, Kiar Weiss, Kiar Weiss, Kiar Weiss. Okay, we're good. It's locked and loaded in my brain now. I'm gonna put the name of this on the screen because it's just not on the package, unfortunately, but it's just a really pretty warm, soft pink. It is a cream and I just put the tiniest little spit of this just on the apples of my cheeks. You see how that just like livened up the blush just a little bit? As much as I love just this warmth, that little hint of pink just does something. It just like freshens up the look even more makes it a little bit more springy too. It's subtle, but I feel like that just made the biggest difference. Don't tell me it didn't, don't tell me it didn't. Guys, I'm gonna be applying highlighter. Yes, yes I know. I am not the biggest highlighter gal. It's a, it's a step that I very often skip, mostly out of laziness, but I've pulled out this say, um, what are these called? Glowy Super Gel Star Glow Highlighter, especially with this base. It just makes it look even more fresh, even more gorge. So I'm gonna put the teeniest, tiniest, littlest pinpoint amount because that's all you need if you're just applying it to your cheekbones. And with my fingers, I'm just gonna dab a little bit right at the top of my cheekbones just to add a nice little glow. Just a bit of a side note, I really hope the lighting and like the change in lighting isn't too bothersome to, to most of you. I always like working with natural light whenever I do any type of tutorial because you guys are just able to see the makeup a lot better this way, but sometimes it could be so annoying when the sun goes in and out and then, you know, it just gets all crazy on camera, but hopefully it's not too bad. For my brows, I'm just gonna brush through with the Milk Kush Fiber Brow Gel in Dub, which is a perfect warm brow gel. I'm using this brow gel to almost fill in my brows at the same time. So I'm really concentrating it on my tail and putting the majority of the product there and then kind of fading it towards the front of my brow by just not putting as much product. I've been on the hunt for like the perfect brow gel for my auburn hair and this color is really nice because it's it's warm but it's not too warm. Sometimes like the red auburn warm brow gels or brow products that brands come out with are like just not quite the right tone. And because my brows are not naturally really warm, they're actually pretty cool toned. It could sometimes look a little bit crazy but I find that this one works really well. It's like the perfect in between. So for my eyes, lately I've been really loving wearing very neutral cream eyeshadows. Like this guy from Laura Mercier. This is in the shade Dune. How would you describe this? I don't know. It's like a light taupe. I, I don't know how to describe this color because it's almost not even a color. It's very, very, very light. Looking at a color like this, you, you would almost feel like it wouldn't even really do much on the lids but because it is so subtle and neutral and it kind of doesn't add that much, but honestly, that's kind of the point. I don't really want something that's gonna add too much to my lids. I just want a little bit of something just to add a little bit of something. And these really light, neutral creams have just been such a nice little addition to my everyday routine. Like look at the difference between this eye and this eye. It really doesn't do much, but it just adds the lightest hint of warmth to my lid, which kind of pulls in all of the warmth that I have going on on my face. And I've always said this, but these little details are always gonna be the ones that kind of take your look from here to here. So even though it's not like a show-stopping part of the makeup look, that little hint of warmth just adds like bit of cohesiveness, which is just really, really pretty. And it's such an easy little step. I love a cream eyeshadow. It's pretty much the only type of eyeshadow that I have been putting on lately. So quick and easy. And these Laura Mercier caviar sticks lock in. They will not move for the entire day. Brown eyeliner has been my absolute fave. I'm using a brown eyeliner just on like the outer corner of my upper lash line, a bit of like a smoky line. And then I extend it just a touch and then I'll take my finger and blend it. And because I have that cream eyeshadow down, it blends really easily. And then I will just drag my fingernail along the edge of the brown to sharpen it up on the outer corner. This is honestly the laziest and best way to apply a uh, eyeliner because it's so easy and literally just requires you smudging it with your finger and it always works every single time. And this is a pencil from Charlotte Tilbury. It's the classic eye powder pencil in classic brown really any brown eye pencil will do. Finishing this off with a little bit of brown mascara, Tower 20 Make Waves in Drift. I always wanna say that this is Grind. It's not, that's not the name, it's Drift. <laughs> As per usual, got a ton of mascara on my eyelids, so ignore that and I will remove that once it's dried. 
or not, I might forget about it. So now for the lip, this is another little concoction that I've been really enjoying. I essentially have been using the milk jelly tints combined with some type of brown lip liner and then a lip oil on top. Today I'm actually be using a new color from the Clarins lip oils. These Clarins lip oils are some of my favorite lip oils, but I haven't used this color yet. So figured might as well try it with you guys. But first let's do the base layer, which has been my go-to lately. So I'm gonna start off first with cork from MAC. Then I'm just gonna take my finger and blend it. Just the inside bit. I'm not even looking for this to be like a super sharp line. I just kind of want it to add a little bit of a contour to my lips. Now I'm gonna take my Milk Cooling Water Jelly Tint, and this one is in the shade Spritz, and I'm gonna put this on the lips. I love this product so much. It's such a pretty tint on both the lips and the cheeks, but I've been especially loving it on the lips. And like I said today, I'm gonna try out this new shade from Clarins. So this is the Lip Comfort Oil in 22. It's like a bright orange, looks so fun. Yes, <laughs> I enjoy that. That is it, that is the entire look. I am obsessed. This is one of my favorite combinations of products that I've put together in a while. There's just something about it all that just works so seamlessly. That is the finished look. I really hope that you enjoyed. Let me know your thoughts in the comments as per usual. Hit the like button if you did enjoy today's video and subscribe if you wanna see more videos from me and I will see you in the next one. Bye.